Put an end to this. Hold the pinnacle of swordsmanship! Today I will be showing you guys how to play and how to build Catalina. Catalina is a versatile melee fighter that uses the Ares gauge. Ares is only summoned after Catalina has generated enough segments by using combo finishers. The gauge has a total of 8 segments and you can only fill it up one half at a time. If you're looking to generate only one segment, all you need to do is light attack, heavy attack. The best way to generate two segments at a time is going to be two light attacks, heavy attack. So it'll look like this. Light attack, light attack, heavy attack. For the fastest way to generate three segments, it's actually going to be doing a link attack. But we won't always have that up. If you really need me to say it, then I'll say it. All you have to do is link attack. The next fastest way to generate three segments is to do a dodge cancel on the activation of either Winter's Rain or Enchanted Lands. It should go like this. Skill, dodge, cancel, heavy attack. Once again, skill, dodge, cancel, heavy attack. And if you aren't running either of them, or if you have them both on cooldown, then the next fastest way would be to do three light attacks into a heavy attack. Light attack, light attack, light attack, heavy attack. Finally, we have the four segment combo. Seven light attacks and one heavy attack. Just a quick challenge for anyone that's watching. If you can guess all the inputs of this fast combo, I'll pin your comment. Upon reaching max Ares gauge, your next combo finisher will summon Ares, allowing you to chain into Ares Pact Strike with your next heavy attack. After you complete an Ares Pact Strike combo, you can use a skill to prolong Ares field time. Only offensive abilities will allow you to chain into another Ares Pact Strike, whereas using a utility skill will not allow you to chain into another Ares Pact Strike. This clip will show you just how long Ares can be prolonged on the field near infinitely as long as you are carrying the correct build. Next up, Catalina has 4 offensive skills and 4 utility skills. Starting with the offensive skills, we have Azure Sword, Enchanted Lands, Frozen Blade, and Winter's Rain. Frozen Blade is the best offensive skill, not because it's the strongest, but because it has a low cooldown with 2 charges, making it the absolute best skill for maintaining Ares. Enchanted Lands and Winter's Rain can both be used for a dodge cancelling technique. Between the two of them, Enchanted Lands has the highest damage and a low cooldown while also being a lunge, whereas Winter's Rain has the highest stun but can also be used as a gap closer only if you perform the skill cancel. Catalina's final offensive skill is Azure Sword, which will not only instantly fail your Ares Gauge, allowing you to restart each fight with 100% Ares Gauge, it will also retain the Ares Gauge at maximum for the next 15 seconds meaning that if you mess up within that 15 second time frame, your Ares gauge will still be full, allowing you to summon Ares again without having to generate the Ares gauge. 
Catalina has four utility skills. Emerald Shield, Heal, Light Wall, and Sacred Winds. Starting with Light Wall, Catalina will cast a 10 second buff of invincibility on herself. But if Ares is available, she will cast a party wide invincibility instead. Next, we have Emerald Shield. This is very similar to Light Wall, where Catalina will cast a 30 second buff of Stout Heart and increase defense by 15% on herself. But if Ares is available, she will cast the buff on her entire party instead. Next, we have Sacred Winds, which can glaciate the enemies for up to 4 seconds. It is one of the best sources of crowd control in the game, and if timed correctly, can skip one or more boss phases. If Ares is available, Ares will increase the size of the skill. Finally, we have Heal. It is a party-wide heal, with or without Ares. It felt good to use in the early game, but after everyone started to run Potion Hoarder, which is a sigil, it's very easy to see that heal is not as impactful anymore in the endgame. Weapons are really straightforward. As you progress through the game, you use either Stinger or a fully awakened Ascension weapon. Once you get Terminus, you always use Terminus. The Ascension weapon looks the best on Catalina though. Now I don't have access to the best imbue stones, which, as Braxophone would say, skill issue. True. The Ultimate Catalina Guide, co-written by Noah and Turi, shows us what the best imbue stones are. If we go to the weapon imbue section, we'll see the recommended weapon imbue trait stones. The first thing I will mention is that every single one of them is using critical hit rate main stat at level 10. This is probably the most important part of the stone, so if you get a level 10 critical hit rate stone, just slap it on for now even if the secondary stats are irrelevant. Next, I will point out that the very first imbue stone is very difficult to get, but only works if you have the exact stats of 10 critical hit rate, 7 damage cap, and 5 damage cap. I'll go over this later, but just keep in mind that it has to be perfect in order to be used. You'll also notice that Cascade appears very often. This is because Cascade maxes out at 20, meaning we only need 4 points of Cascade on our imbue stone to cap it out. Firm Stance is worth mentioning here because Catalina only wants 20 even though the cap is 30. Next up, Drain, Guts, and Auto Revive. All three of them are quality of life traits that are great at low levels. And finally, for damage sources, the Ultimate Catalina Guide recommends Life on the Line and Critical Damage. In my opinion, I think Cascade 4 with Drain or Guts are going to be the best value here. But it's entirely up to you, these are all viable. Masteries are stat boosters and sometimes even quality of life upgrades for certain characters and their kits. Fortunately, the game gives us an abundance of mastery points, so much that they expect us to use the extra mastery points we get to gamble for better over masteries. So when it comes to masteries, we get everything, no decisions to make here, pretty straightforward. Now for over masteries, I'll make it real simple for you guys. Adelina wants 20% critical hit rate because it'll help us hit the fabled 100% critical hit rate that I keep talking about but don't expand on. Anyway, afterwards, we want normal damage cap up, preferably at 20 as well. And that's it. That's all I'm going to recommend. The amount of rolling you'd have to do to get four of the best overmastery stats might make you lose your sanity. But if you really want to min-max your build, the best third stat is skill damage up, not skill cap up. Then the final stat should be flat attack. Once again, the odds of getting all four of these stats at maximum is very difficult, which is why I recommend just being happy with critical hit rate 20 and normal damage cap up 20. Sigils are the most important part of a build. There are 12 slots, and using the correct sigils can go a long way in helping you achieve what you want. Guardian's Honor does not complement the playstyle because the minus 5% skill cooldown you get from the trait only procs when Ares is resummoned onto the field. Remember, our current playstyle is to prolong Ares' field time without despawning Ares at all. Guardian's Conviction, on the other hand, encourages our playstyle because the condition is to have Ares on the field, which should always be the case when we're looking to do damage. 
While Ares is on the field, Catalina gains a 100% chance to proc supplementary damage for 10% of the base damage alongside damage cap plus 15%. Guardian's Conviction is actually one of the few ways to bypass damage cap, so this will be a staple for Catalina. Next, we will talk about Critical Hit Rate 5. Finally, the last Critical Hit Rate piece. Let me explain. A level 15 Critical Hit Rate Sigil becomes 16 trait points into Critical Hit Rate trait, plus 10 from the Imbue Stone we have, making it 26 trait level Critical Hit Rate. 26 Critical Hit Rate trait is actually 30% Critical Hit Rate. Hedvina has a base of 50% Critical Hit Rate from Masteries and then another 20% from Over Masteries for a grand total of 100%. Next, we will We'll add 4 damage cap 5s, which is self-explanatory, then we add our damage boosters. Hedlina actually utilizes combo booster very well. If you remember our Guardian's Conviction trait, it has a 100% chance to proc supplementary damage. Even if it's only 10% of the base damage, the extra instance of damage will give us an extra stack of combo booster. This means every input gives us 2 stacks instead of 1, letting us reach max stacks much easier. Then we add Stamina and Tyranny because they are the best attack boosters. It is also worth mentioning that if you want to add a 4th damage booster to your build, Skilled Assault is a very strong pick for the Ares version of Enchanted Lands. For the next slot, we are running Stout Heart. It is a very good quality of life trait that Catalina appreciates very much. And we have the Curios. These two traits both have different ways to bypass the damage gap but they are both locked behind the RNG of the Curio boxes. Because of this, I recommend only getting one of each. Or, if you don't have either, you can place in one skill to salt plus another utility trait until you get blessed by the Curio RNG gods. Onto the utility sigils. I ordered these from top to bottom in order of importance in my opinion. Quick cooldown and cascade are both cooldown sigils and are very nice to have. Aegis is up here because I recommended Tyranny, which should counteract the HP loss, giving us 41,000 total HP. Potion Hoarder gives you so many potions, it's a great quality of life sigil to have. And then Steel Nerves is a conditional that has 100% uptime because we are running Stout Heart Sigil. This next category is all usable, but not as important as the ones previously mentioned above. Firm Stance is at the top because it's a conditional. If you have the Imbue Stone, then you'll want to use this. Guts is rated higher than Auto Revive because Guts prevents going down, meaning that Ares doesn't get despawned, whereas Auto Revive will despawn Ares during the revival animation. Drain, Stronghold, and Garrison are kind of on the same level. Drain has a cap of 500 healing per instance of damage, Stronghold is better than Garrison, but is a curio, making it harder to get a good secondary stack. Garrison is easy to farm, but when you're already that low, you might end up getting one shot anyway. I didn't mention Link Together or Uplift here because I think these two are best in a team environment where either you all run it or none of you run it, so it's up to you and your pals to figure out if you want to commit the sigil slots for it. I think this will serve as a great baseline for any Catalina build. You're actually able to open up two sigil slots if you end up getting Guardian's Conviction plus an orange secondary stat from the Trans Marvel. Same goes for critical hit rate 5 plus. It can also hold one of the orange traits as a secondary. The orange traits that I'm talking about are going to be damage cap, stamina, combo booster, tyranny, or skilled assault. Just gonna leave another reminder that there is an ultimate Catalina guide made by the Grand Blue Fantasy Relink Discord. I will leave a link to both the Discord and the ultimate guide in the description below. Thanks for watching this far. I've been having a great time with Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. I sunk in over 100 hours during the first week because I was so in love with the game. The combat just feels so good to me. The vibrant colors, the anime style and settings, the music, oh my goodness. There's so many good things to say about this game. But I just wanted to say that I am excited for the Lucilius boss fight coming up and then the new characters month after. I hope the developers decide to keep making content for this game because it was such a pleasant surprise. I also hope Lucilius kicks my ass and has some cool mechanics. You know, keep it fresh.